Spider-Man gives him that look like... Is this nigga serious? All right, so I recently ran back the Amazing Spider-Man 1. And the guy said this movie was straight fucking heat. There's people out here that do not fuck with this movie at all. And I ask you, and I urge you to run that back. Because the shit fucking Peter Parker slash spider man does in the first half of this film. And my man Lizard spoke with that Lizard pack is fucking amazing. Ha ha ha! the video yet? So no bullshit, let's get right into it! So meet Peter Parker, a normal high school student who goes through normal day activities, such as getting balls thrown at his face, skateboarding at the halls, and of course, taking pictures of the girl he fucking likes without her knowing. Hold up, Peter. What the fuck is your ass doing, bro? What this boy next door creepy stalker bullshit? Like, what if her ass found out about them photos, bro? What then, bro? What if she caught your ass and caught them photos? Your ass trying to get that base, not catch that base. This shit has to be easily in the number two slot of spider simp moments. Number one goes to Miles, bitch ass. I don't know how you draw pictures in your notebook of your favorite white girl. And then she fucked your ass lacking the 4K, bro. She sold up pictures that your ass drew. Like, what is you doing? Sometime later, the next day after Peter's been by Spider, he now realizes that he has enough strength so where he could make any bitch bust after one thrust. Off of that nod, my man goes right to school with his newfound powers. So you would think that he would go ahead and get the girl that he likes with his newfound powers on some Superman shit. If y'all thought that y'all dead ass wrong, my boy don't give a fuck about hoes. All he cares about is fucking breaking ankles and stunting them motherfuckers in front of their homies and hoes. Like, are y'all seeing this shit right now? This shit's fucking hilarious, bruh. What over here? A fucking dunk on this fool, bro. Like, yo, this is some shit I expect from Bully Maguire. Like, this bro don't give a fuck in this film. That's why he's Spider Man. Is. And this is before Uncle Ben dies, bro, and he becomes Spider Man. Like, in this film, me out here doing Bully Maguire shit, bro. I see you, Pete. I see you. The only thing you're not doing is juggling four different girls in one fucking film. Later on, so after Uncle Ben gets capped, he didn't really hit the streets to look for the person who did this to Uncle Ben. So, a man come across this dude harassing this chick over here. He decks this dude right in the fucking face, bro. You didn't know work on his ass. No good to attack. This boy's trying to slash for the fucking set. My man's fucking pushing them off and shit. Toss them to the side. Peter realizes there's a fucking one on ten right now, so he starts running away to outrun these fools. This shit turned into a whole Scooby-Doo fucking goose chase. My man out here, Peter, fading these motherfuckers, smack this dude in the grill, kick this dude off him, and catch up to the dude he was originally chasing. Peter catches up to this dude, Weak. fucking weaves that punch, and knocks him off the fucking side of the building, holding on to him and check if he has the star tattoo. Obviously, he don't so peter puts his fucking hands on the ledge and let him live another day and after that on this fucking night on this night fire menace was born so after that peter immediately starts catching the fate with anybody that fits the description of uncle ben's killer i love how he just leaves some of these dudes here and doesn't report them to belize or fucking ties them up it just shows that he only cares about fucking vengeance and vengeance only if you in his way then you gain them hands bitch also can i talk about how good the fucking a vigilante suit is in this movie because oh my goodness this suit was straight heat one thing to like a lot in this film is the realism and what i mean by realism is the fact that some of the things that you see and characters do in this film are things that people would do in real life. Peter Parker out here harassing motherfuckers, not instantly going for fucking the heroism and all that shit. It's something that someone would do with this type of abilities in real life. At least he ain't killing motherfuckers. The only person he wants to kill is the person that killed Uncle Ben. It makes perfect sense why he's doing what he's doing. The suit itself, the vigilante suit, is something that someone could get done in real life. It's nearly a fucking ski mask, a beanie shade, some regular ass clothes, and some shoes, my boy. With that realism, and I like it. I like to see it a lot. So Peter Parker during his spider menace phase is doing what I said he'd be doing. He's out here catching the fade with any street thug that, again, looks like Uncle Ben's the fucking killer, breathes like Uncle Ben's killer. Hell, if you fucking white and you have blonde hair, he wants to fade with you. And after some time, Peter Parker finally makes the full-on spider menace suit in all its glory. Yeah. Oh, shit, that whole scene was clean. Let me run that shit back. And then directly after that, this motherfucker hits a pose over the New York City skyline on some of the Batman shit. Nah, bro. And motherfuckers don't like this film. What the fuck you're watching back in 2012? Oh, yeah. 
I forgot this movie just came out there in the same year. Later that same day, so this random dude out here is fucking carjacking this car with some weird ass device. What the fuck did he get that shit? Anyway, so he's carjacking this car and enters the car. Meanwhile, Spider Man is already inside the fucking car with him. How he got in there, I don't fucking know. So Spider Man starts harassing this dude like he's been doing for the past fucking 30 fucking minutes of this film. He turns around, Spider Man is nowhere to be seen inside of the car. But then out of nowhere, Spider Man comes from the front and he will around this dude to the floor. Whoa, 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 whoa. Where the fuck did he come from? How the hell did he went from the back of the car to the front of his face? What? I know I have been meat riding this movie this entire video, but hold the fuck up. I will call out the bullshit when I see it. What the fuck was that? What, what, what? Did you Spider Man the whole position or he got fucking teleportation powers or some Jason Voorhees shit? Homeboy then whips out Spider Man's ultimate weakness. Knife. My weakness, it's small knives. But obviously spider man is gotcha, fucking with him, my boy. Cause he just webs him up and just calls it so easy. Like, man, this is what I love about Andrew Garfield Spider-Man. He talks the most fucking shit, bruh. Like, oh my god, it's so funny. Look how menacing this dude is, bro. Like, oh my goodness, this is why I love Spider-Man. But fortunately for this guy, it turns out he's not the one Spider-Man is looking for. So one time finally appears on the set and it starts with this little dude on the motorcycle. So my man out here, Spider-Man, thinking things are sweet. But my man whoops out the blicky on Spider-Man as he should because Spider-Man is a trade-up menace to society in this fucking first half. Spider-Man gets a little closer and the man starts shooting. And Spider-Man ultra instant that shit mad quick. Spider-Man gives him that look like, is this nigga serious? He flips over and takes his gun from his ass and bitches at the fucking cops saying, man, I did your work for you, bitch. But then the rest of the one time starts arriving on the set, so Spider-Man realized it's time to fucking jet. Much, much later, after returning this kid to his dad and Peter Parker now looking at them freaking hugging and embracing, he realizes that being Spider-Man is not about vengeance. It's about being a hero for the people. And some people don't like this fucking movie, bruh. Y'all fucking tripping, bruh. Like, come on. After that scene, you're not telling me this is not a good ass Spider Man movie. You're tripping. Tripping. Yeah, that was the Spider-Man as part of the video. So let's talk about now the lizard briefly. Now, like I said earlier, I will call out the bullshit when I see it and respectfully for me personally. And I mean this in the most up respectfully way possible. Lizard's design to me is straight cheese. I'm sorry, I, I don't fuck with it. I'm sorry, I just, I just can't. I can't. What well, I do not like this fucking design. It literally looks like some bullshit out of fucking Super Mario the movie, bro. Like, what is this fucking Bowser fucking bullshit? But that does not take away the performance and acting and great stuff that Lizard does in this film. The main thing I want to focus on is where this man started really smoking that Lizard pack. So Spider-Man's heading inside the fucking sewer. You must be asking, why is he in the sewer? Well, because that's where the lizard secret lair is at. And I gotta say, man, this is what the shit I'm talking about when it comes to liking this movie. Now, I just say I like this movie a lot when it terms to like the realism, but I also like the comic book silliness that's also in this film. Because the lizard's whole entire plan in this film. Get ready. Do y'all want to know what it is? His whole entire plan, his master plan, is turning the rest of New York City into lizards. Really, nigga? Now, I know that sounds like hot shit, okay? I know that sounds like great trash, my boy. Like, it literally sounds like some Batman and Robin, I'm gonna freeze the whole entire city shit, my boy. Like, that's what it sounds like. But hear me out, hear me out. But it's so dumb, I cannot help but like it. Now, listen, is it stupid as shit? Yes. But come on, this is this level of comic book feeling this that we've been seeing for a while. Like, look back at the power of the sun in the palm of my hand, my boy. You mean tell me that's not some goofy ass shit, bro? Come on, really? And depending on your goofy don't always need to be some bad shit. Like, me personally, I love all three of the Spider-Man films. Yes, I said it. All fucking three of the Spider-Man Raimi films. All three of them. They're all amazing. And this, to me, is not that over top where I'm just gonna hate the film. But again, this is a comic book movie. A comic book movie. It's already goofy enough. I got a dude in spandex swinging around the fucking city, bro. Like, how more goofy can you get than that? At the end of the day, to me, movies are made to entertain the viewer. And that's what you forget nowadays, man. It could be some of the most trash you ever fucking see in your entire life and someone will still find that entertaining and that's what i love about movies and tv shows the most man it's made to entertain the viewer fireman setting up a trap to catch lizard lacking in 4k in his own set but lizard pulls out that uno reverse card and instead yeah, catches right, spider-man lacking in 4k with peter's own camera 
I have to literally send Spider-Man packing. He literally finds the camera Spider-Man was using. And Spider-Man decides to bring his own camera because I guess Peter's a fucking moron and did not think to not bring his own camera to enemy territory. Like, bro, what did you do That's like if a KKK member in full fucking gear walked down the hood. I wonder what the fuck's gonna happen. Armored with that now, Lizard does one of the most dastry things I've ever seen a Spider-Man villain do in these films. And this right here, this moment I'm about to show y'all is the reason why he started smoking that lizard path. I'll give y'all a little multiple choice question. What do you think Glitter did with the knowledge that Spider-Man is Peter Parker. Did he A, went to sneak in when he's outside on some fucking Harry Osborne shit? Did he B, went to his own crib on some fucking kingpin shit? Or did he C, went to his school when he's with his girl? Y'all motherfuckers know A or B. Y'all dead ass wrong because this motherfucking lizard did some of the most dastard shit ever seen in my life. He really went to run the fade with him when he's with his girl. Everybody knows you don't run the ones with a dude when he's with his girl, bro. That's his safe space. That's his area. You don't do that shit. This man was just really wanted back in blood. So after Peter throws his bitch to fucking leave, my man and Lizard start fucking scrapping. Lizard tosses Spider-Man through a wall, some fucking injustice transition shit. Then Lizard picks him up and tosses him aside like an ungrateful hoe. And then this man proceeds to make a fucking chemical bomb and throws Bring it out. inside the hole Spider-Man's in. <laughs> ah, bro, my Lizard is smoking that Lizard pie. Spider-Man fully now in his suit is now trying to fucking immobilize the Lizard while also talking him down. Their fight leads into the hallway and Spider-Man tries to fucking move on this man, but Lizard practices his ass and fucking palms him to the window. Then run his Lizard in a dome piece with a trophy, and I'm like, run, bitch, run! Give Spider-Man enough time to put Lizard in a whole ass web cocoon, and then he can get Gwen the fuck out of there. Lizard then breaks free of the webs, and then my man Spider-Man hits one of my favorite lines in the entire film. Somebody's been a bad Lizard. Oh my god, he's the best Spider-Man! That's why all those clips are better than Toby! After that, we have a whole one-take fight scene in our fucking library with Stan Lee in the back fucking putting bucks away, and y'all call it movie trash! Spider-Man again gets folded to some fucking books! And this allows Lizard to fucking flee the area. Yeah, that was my little review on Amazing Spider-Man 1, and I hope y'all really enjoyed this video. I really put some lunch time in this, hope. If y'all did like this shit, give it a like and subscribe if y'all want to. Please subscribe, please. But anyway, leave a comment and let me know if y'all liked it or not. Or let me know what you all thought about the video in general. Love y'all. Like always, thank you for the support. Peace!